Across two decades of VEX Robotics, some matches have defined the competition. From underdog victories to heart-stopping finals, these games changed how the world saw robotics. And today, we'll be looking at just that, some of the best matches in VEX history. We start off in the most recent season, High Stakes, and the match we'll be looking at is Semifinals 2-1 in the Dome Playoffs, and boy was this match full of twists and excitements. On the Red Alliance is 8001B and 2775V, and on Blue is 1010W and 9904B. Whoever wins this match will go off to play in the finals to crown a world champion, which means the stakes are high. In high stakes, the most important point values comes from the positive and negative zones. Any points scored on a mobile goal and brought to a positive zone will be doubled and vice versa deducted if placed in the negative. There are also wall stakes and alliance stakes. Every ring scored on a goal or a stake is worth one point, while the top is worth three. So top ring control is very important. Oh, and did I forget to mention the most important part? There's also a three stage ladder in the middle that teams have to climb at the end. Right off the bat, the red alliance wins the auto and secures the bonus. Each alliance takes control of one positive corner, but only four out of the five goals are in play. As the clock hits 1.30, both alliances starts putting up wall sticks. That's when 1010W takes control of the fifth goal, giving Blue a one goal lead. At the one minute mark, 1010 abandons the goal and heads to the center, aiming for an early tier three climb to secure the match. But 2775B is waiting, ready to defend. Meanwhile, in the right corner, double play somehow breaks through and manages to score a full blue goal from the positive zone. Blue responds quickly, dashing over to return the favor. As the clock hits 30, Blue corners Red's goal into the negative zone, and things are looking rough for Red. Even worse, Tenton secures a clean tier 3 climb, and they might even get the top ring. With 20 seconds left, the tides shift again. Jackson area locks in another tier 3 climb, a double play pulls off another clutch move, dumping a full blue goal into the negative. At the end, when the buzzer sounded, Tenton wasn't able to score with high stake, and the match ends with Red winning by just a mere 7 points. That close call carried them into the finals and eventually to win the world championship. The next match takes us to Wisconsin. During the over-under season, this was a signature event where teams from all around the country came to compete. In this semifinal, the first seed alliance was set to face the fourth seed underdogs. On red, we have Hope Robotics and Robogaz. On blue, we have Hellstorm and Alibi, sister teams from Tennessee. In Over Under, there are two main goals that serve as the primary scoring elements. Each tri ball scored in a goal is worth 5 points for that alliance, while every tri ball on your alliance side of the field is worth 1 point. The color coded balls always belong to your alliance no matter where they end up, and on top of that, there are pipes you can climb on for extra points in the end game. And oh, did I forget to mention the most important twist? If an alliance ends up being double zoned, the opposing team can de score by driving into the goal and plowing all the blocks out at once. But come on. No one would actually do that, right? At the start of the match, Red jumps out in a commanding lead, winning the autonomous bonus and landing an early score that Blue just couldn't defend. As the clock hits 120, Red's lead is growing larger, and you can see their confidence turning into overconfidence. That's when they make their first mistake. They double zone. Hellstorm doesn't miss a beat. They seize the opportunity, rushing in for a massive D score that puts Blue back in the game. But it's not over yet. Red being the first seed fights back hard. Over the next minute, they rebuild their lead, looking every bit like the favorites. With just 20 seconds left, Blue is down on goals, down on Auton, things are looking grim. And then this happens. What is Red doing? They double zone again. Like paid actors, Hellstorm executes the D score of the season. Triballs goes flying, and when the dust settles, Blue not only steals the win, they double Red's final score. Next, for spin-up, we are back in Dallas in the Vex Dome. Quarterfinals 3-1. On the Red Alliance, we have 54189J and 81988D. Facing them on blue were none other than 2775V again and 9698B. In spin-up, the main objective was simple. Teams scored by shooting discs into goals and controlling rollers. And during endgame, robots can launch string or anything else connected to them across the field tiles to collect points. 
As the 15 second autonomous period comes to an end, Blue Alliance takes the auto bonus, putting themselves in an early lead. Right as driver control begins, Jackson area springs into action, playing heavy defense on modern crusaders. The red puncher bot capable of firing all three discs into the high go at once. Meanwhile, the other two robots focused on rapid cycling, each trying to pile as many discs into the high go as possible. Midway through, Jackson area leaves modern crusaders at the center field to grab a few discs. But out of nowhere, modern crusaders somehow sinks a shot from midfield, an impressive showcase of their auto-aim programming. Still, Blue wastes no time. They quickly fill up their high goal, then pivoting straight to defense, denying red access to discs and controlling the pace of the game. As the match ticks down to the last 30 seconds, all four robots swarm to the corners, battling over rollers. Blue dominates, flipping them in their favor. Jackson then completely shuts down half of Modern Crusader's endgame, while 969B fires off their expansion cleanly, denying red the chance to respond. When the buzzer sounds, the upset is complete. The 7th seed Blue Alliance eliminates the 2nd seed, sending shockwaves through the dome. We move over to Brentwood, Tennessee for tipping point, the 2021-2022 season. On the Red Alliance is 9364E and 4082B. On Blue is 38141B and 8481Z. In tipping point, there are 7 mobile goals, 3 neutral, and 2 per alliance. You can move these mobile goals into your alliance zones for 20 points, or stack them onto balance beams worth 40. You can also score the rings onto these goals for points, and even park your robot onto the balance beam for 40 points. This match was from earlier in the season before the meta of hoarding the goals and sitting in corners for the whole match was developed. So this whole match remained extremely intense and fast paced. The autonomous period ends with red controlling the majority of the goals, but blue getting the auto bonus. As driver control begins, both alliances spring to life, immediately stealing goals back and forth. 4082B rushes to the top corner, snatching a blue goal and dragging it across the field. Pybotics fires white back, reclaiming a neutral goal to keep things even. Down at the bottom of the field, 9364E and 8481Z lock into a tug of war. But this doesn't last long. Forza to b drives in to join the fight, and 9364E gives up. The match stays razor close until the 45 second mark, when the momentum shifts. Forza to b makes a massive play, stealing a neutral goal straight from the blue's balance beam. Seconds later, 9364E tips the same beam, helping Forza to b snatch yet another blue goal. As Pybotic scrambles to recover, Forza to b capitalizes again, swooping in to steal the last neutral goal from the tipped beam. With just 15 seconds left, Red locks down control, placing three goals onto their balance beam, while Blue desperately scrambles for a last second part, but it comes up short. When the buzzer sounds, the Red Alliance claims victory, winning the signature event and securing their spots at Worlds. And yeah, those are a few matches from 2025 to 2021 that I think deserves to make the video and are really entertaining. Let me know in the comments if there's more matches that you think um, are good and if you want a part two.